So in the third video in my CentOS series, we're going to take a look at file management. I'm going to show you how to browse and navigate the file system via the files utility and also the command line as well. From here, we're going to get more and more advanced, but this is an easy one, so I'll show you the default file layout. I'll show you some commands to help you manage the file system and move around, and then we'll move up from there. Okay, so here we are back on my laptop again. And in the previous video, I gave you guys an overview of the GNOME desktop environment. And one of the applications that I showed you was this one right here, files, I'll do a new window here. And as I mentioned in that video, this application right here serves as the default file manager that you'll use if you do decide to use a GUI. But not every installation of CentOS is going to have a GUI at all. So maybe this is something you'll never use, but I'm going to show you both ways. Now, Files, also known as Nautilus, is very easy. I'm going to activate this mode right here, List View. I think that that's a little bit easier to follow. When you first open the file manager here, you are in your home directory, it says Home. That is your location to store any files or folders that you would like to store. We could create new folders, basically. We can also create new files, which I'll show you creating files in another video. But we could simply navigate, and if we want to get rid of some directories, for example, we could just move them to the trash. The trash is right here. You see the two folders that I just deleted. Now these directories here are basically just default directories they give you for examples, but you don't have to have these on the file system. Now everything you see here is associated with your home directory, but where exactly is the home directory? If we go to other locations, we have this nifty section here which gives you your root file system where it says computer. That's the beginning of the file system. It also has Windows Network, or at least it does in my case. If you have file shares, you should be able to get to them through Windows Network. But specific to this video, if you click on a computer, we have what is actually the beginning of the installation. It's designated by a single forward slash. So going back here, we see that it has a forward slash right here. If you are running Mac OS, you already understand that concept. If you are more accustomed to Windows, think of the forward slash as C. It's a little bit more advanced than that, but for now, that's all I should need to think of it as. Inside there, we have a list of default directories. And right here, we actually have the home directory. So we could see that the home directory is at the beginning of the file system. If we click on it, or in that case, double click on it, you see we have a username right here. And that's actually my username. Every user on a Linux system by default will get their own home directory. And I only have my own user on this system right now. We will get into user management in a future video. If I double click on this, notice that the title changed to simply home with a capital H, and I'm in my actual home directory. You could also see that right here. So when you click on home, which is also the default location you start on, you're actually going to slash home slash J. So if we walk through the file system here, go all the way back here, slash, the beginning of the file system, home, and then J, so slash home, then J. If I double click here, I'm going to right click and then open in terminal. This video is proudly sponsored by Linode. I've trusted Linode for over two and a half years as my infrastructure provider. Along the way, I've used them for all sorts of things, like my web server, for example. The wiki for this YouTube channel is also hosted on it, and I also use it for quite a few of the tutorials that you've enjoyed on my channel recently. I recommend Linode because it's simple to use, has affordable capped pricing that just makes sense, and reliable 24 by 7 support available by phone or support ticket. If you're a Linux power user, your server customization options 
are all but limitless. Even if you are just starting to learn, you can use Linode's growing list of one-click installations to easily get a site, app, or service up and running in the cloud. To get $20 in credit toward your new Linode account, use promo code LearnLinux19 at sign up, or just visit the URL that you see on your screen right now. I'd like to give a special thank you to Linode for their support of my channel. Definitely go ahead and check them out. And now let's get back to the video. Now here is where everything starts to come together, at least for navigating the file system. If I do an ls, we can see the same folders here colored in blue that we see if we use the graphical utility. All of these should be named exactly the same because they are. What we have right here is the default shell prompt or bash prompt, which is giving us the option to enter a command. I just entered one ls, short for list storage. So I've officially given you your first command. The ls command is just going to list the contents of your current working directory. On the bash prompt, the tilde right here is actually where it's supposed to show you the directory that you are currently attached to. Well, actually it is showing you that because the tilde represents your home directory. So we could do pwd and that will print your working directory, which we can see is slash home slash j. So the forward slash is the beginning of the hard drive or the root file system or the root of the file system. The home directory is there on the beginning of the file system here. We have a home directory. So if I do ls and I could do dash l, which will give us a long list. And I can do forward slash for the beginning of the file system here. We can see we have the home directory right here. So the home directory is at the beginning of the file system. So slash beginning of the file system, home, and then slash j. That's where I am right now. We can use the cd command to change into a different directory. So I'll ls again. And what I could do is cd downloads. I just press tab to autocomplete. It defaulted to putting the slash at the end there. We don't actually need to have that. I press enter. You can see our working directory changed to downloads. And now our working directory is slash home slash j slash downloads. I can do cd space dot dot to move back one directory and then move into another directory. And now I'm in the music directory. So I could do cd dot dot and then I'll go back to the other directory. Actually, I made a mistake and I did that on purpose. Now I mentioned cd space dot dot will go back a directory. cd and then just a single dot does absolutely nothing. Well, actually, it's not technically doing nothing. A single period refers to your current working directory. So essentially by doing cd dot, I'm basically saying change directory to my current working directory. But I'm already in my current working directory. That's why cd space dot does absolutely nothing. cd with two periods, like I mentioned, will just take you back to a previous directory. And we can type the entire path of a directory if we want to, or if we want to go to a completely different place. So for example, I could do cd space and then the forward slash here. My current working directory is just the forward slash. I do a long listing here. We have the root of the file system, which is basically the beginning. And then we have all of these directories right here. Now I'm not going to go over all of these, but I'll go over a few. The boot directory has important files that handles the Linux distribution's capability of booting up. So I'll clear the screen, which I did by just control L, and then I can do ls slash boot to see what is inside that directory. And we have these files right here, which are just, again, what's used to boot the server or workstation. So as you can probably imagine, you don't want to delete that folder. And if you do, don't expect your machine to boot up when you turn it on again. The home directory I already talked about. There's the Etsy directory right here. I know it says ETC. In the Linux community, we have a fixation for saying things in strange ways. So we pronounce this Etsy. Other folders here on this list, we will get to in a future video. I don't want to give you too much information right now. Now, 
What I'm going to do is get back to my home directory. I'll do cd slash home slash j. That'll get me into my home directory. But actually, I could simply do cd and then tilde, and that will get me to my home directory regardless of what my present working directory actually is. Now I'm in slash home slash j. In the files application, I showed you how to create folders, aka directories. Pretty easy, just right click and create a folder. It's also easy to do so from the command line as well. So I could do mkdir test. And now we have that folder right here. If I open the file manager again, sure enough, there's the directory that I've created. If I want to get rid of it, I could do rm-r and then the name of the directory. Be very careful though, the dash r and the rm command, the remove command, means recursive. If you delete the wrong thing, it's gone. Linux is a user-friendly operating system, but it's not going to hold your hand either. If you tell it to do something, it will do it for better or worse. So I'll press enter and we can see that that directory is not there. In a future video, I'm going to show you how to edit text files. But right now, I'm going to create a file to show you how easy it is to do that. So I could simply just use the touch command and then give it a file name. What do you think is going to happen? So I'll press enter, then I'll do ls-l. You can see the test file that I just created right here. That's essentially what the touch command does. It will create a file if it doesn't already exist. You can see that the directories or folders are colored in blue, and then we have the file that is colored in white. Now that's not always the case though. That is a customization of the shell, basically a terminal customization that isn't always going to be the case. I'll get into what all of this means in a future upcoming video, but real quick, one sure way to tell the difference is you do a long listing, if the first character is D, it's a directory. If it's a hyphen, it's a file. So even if it's not colored, you can still tell the difference. And I could do rm test file to get rid of the file. I'd only need dash r if I'm removing a directory. Now that file is gone. Also the touch command, I'll just go ahead and do this again. Like I mentioned, it will create the file if it doesn't already exist. And I used dash LH out of habit. It's just muscle memory. I haven't even gone over dash H yet. I'll cover that later. But we can see that the test file is here. I recreated it. So what happens then if we run the touch command against a file that already exists? So I'll do that now. LS dash L again. And we can see that it actually updated the modification time, which is the only difference. So basically the takeaway here is that the touch command will create a file if it doesn't already exist. It creates it with a size of zero because we didn't put any contents in there. But if the file already exists, it will update the modification time. That could be useful if you want to trigger, for example, a backup, even though a file hasn't actually changed. It could basically make it out to be as if it did change. So there you go. I just gave you some additional basics. Each video in this series will get more advanced as we go along. In the next video, I'm going to introduce you to the concept of editing files. I'll show you how to do that from the GUI as well as the terminal. That video, in fact, is already uploaded to my channel. So I'll go ahead and meet you over in that video. See you there.